Yo, 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 people and patrons of the night, it is your boy, BD. And as many of you may know, but if this is your first time stumbling on my channel, I am the host of the Horror Tavern. Um, this is a place where it's a one-stop shop for all things horror. I review all genres of horror. I review all forms of media for horror. And today we're going to be once again venturing into that avenue. So make sure that you take a seat, you grab a drink, it's happy hour. And uh, we're going to be once again exploring the limitless cavern that is the horror genre. Specifically with one of the most famous anthology horror shows in existence. Um, this one was extremely popular, extremely well loved, 100% iconic. And I've covered some of the episodes in this series before, but today is a special one. I'm going to be talking about what is, in my opinion, and I think some other people's opinion, the scariest episode in this show. And in my opinion, this is my favorite, the best episode in the entire series. And that is, of course, the show Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt is a very famous anthology horror show. It did a lot of noir crime stories, which essentially a lot of the stories end up being sort of not true crime, it's fictional crime, but fictional crime, it'll be played up like some type of true crime kind of drama story, but they'll add some comical elements. They'll add some extra pizzazz, try to make it more interesting, but it deals a lot with noir crime and those kind of fictional crime stories. But occasionally, in Tales from the Crypt, you would end up getting stories that are more supernatural, paranormal. They would deal with monsters. They would deal with otherworldly things. And those ones often being some of the most unique episodes in the entire franchise. And the quality on a lot of them are very good. So I end up actually enjoying those ones, in my opinion, the most. And this is without a doubt one of them. This is in season two, towards the end of season two, um, one of the back-to-back -back banger episodes in a certain, excuse me, span of um, episodes in season two. And that is season two, episode 16, Television Terror. Television Terror is, in my opinion, the scariest episode of Tales from the Crypt. And 100%, it is my favorite episode as of right now in the show. So let me talk a little bit about the plot of this story, and then I'll get into some specifics as to why I like it so much. So, Tales from the Crypt, season two, episode 16, Television Terror. It takes place with the main character called Horden. Horton is a sort of middle-aged guy. He's a news reporter of this sort of popular TV show. It, it, get the hint that it's popular, but it's sort of dying off in views. And he reports live on the scene of this haunted house in this town. This haunted house happened to belong to a matriarch figure, this woman, um, Mrs. Rotter, I believe, who ran a boarding home where she had elderly sort of patients and people in there. And what ended up happening was she actually became a prolific serial killer. She killed a lot of these elderly people in some violent and brutal ways, and she did it to collect, you know, security checks. And not only was she getting that satisfaction of killing, but also benefiting off of it financially. And she kept the bodies of the 12 victims down in the basement of this house. And there's also potentially more unconfirmed victims that may have been killed. So Horton, who's the, you know, again, news reporter of this TV show, goes to this haunted house. He's basically reporting live from the scene. And he's actually going to take his camera crew inside of there to get a look at the house, maybe explore some of it and get the viewer's attention. Because he's known in this um, TV TV show that he has that he always goes to meet these sort of macabre and darker figures he interviews people like satanist he reviews people like cultist um and again like today he's going to this haunted house of this prolific serial killer woman so he does these kind of things to try to garner attention and be more unique and although he's very passionate um afterwards when the cameras are turned off at points you find out horton is sort of that TV personality diva kind of guy. You know, he's very commanding. He thinks he's the shit. He's always bossing around people. And his, you know, employees and coworkers fucking hate him. I mean, they cannot stand his guts. There's a woman who I believe is the producer of the show, good looking young woman, and she's sleeping with him, but she hates his guts. She doesn't like how egotistical he is, the fact that he's so narcissistic. A lot of the other producers that are in the truck of this crew, um, you know, kind of shit talk him off camera. So you can get the sense that they hate working with him, but they're just doing it for the job or in the hopes that his TV show will pick back up in popularity. And they end up calling a psychic. And the psychic gets to this 
um, haunted house. And then when Horton gets on camera and starts interviewing the psychic and talking to him, the psychic warns him that, you know, this is potentially dangerous, that there might be some repercussions that come with this house and there's some dangerous potential activity in there. But Horton decides, you know what, we're going to do it anyway. We need to get in there. We need to get a good story. So he ends up taking his camera crew, one of his camera guys in there. Both of them go inside of the mansion. And when the cameras turn on and you see this sort of boarding house, it's very dark, very dingy or typical haunted house stuff. It's very eerie. And you again also get the aspect of like found footage, sort of that perspective of the camera moving around the house. It's a grainy old camera. You get this staticky sort of old school footage of this haunted house the shadowy corners in there, just how dark and dingy it is. And as they're walking around, he, you know, he starts explaining some of the things in there. He goes into the kitchen and gives some history behind the murders and the serial killer. And then he encounters some rats. So again, it's a very worn down sort of place. It's been boarded up for like several years before he tore it down and went inside of there. And as they cut to commercial break and they're getting ready to basically try to, you know, pizzazz up the the, the segment somehow because the ratings are coming in from producers um, or I guess like the head people of the TV company and they're saying, you know, this is not that good. Um, it, it's okay so far, but it's kind of boring. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's kind of dragging on. You need to spice it up. And Horton gets very mad again. He thinks this is a genius story. He doesn't understand why the executives are giving him a hard time. So he tries to figure out a way to make it more interesting for the viewers and find something to do. And then all of a sudden when he's sort of frustrated, the him and the camera guy hear this creepy moaning sound that comes up from the top floor of this uh, mansion. Um, they basically go up there and they hear this moaning sound and they're sort of freaked out. They think that somebody might be up there. Something's going on. And then the camera guy, uh, his camera starts malfunctioning. So he has to put it down on the middle table and start fixing it up and working on it. And the show producers and the truck are kind of trying to make sure that everything goes well. They're trying to help out um, Horton because his uh, equipment for this recording is not you know, working properly. And then he hears this dripping sound and the producer woman, the younger lady, hears the dripping sound as well. And she brings that to Horton's attention because she's like the utilities have been turned off in this house for several years or longer. So there should be no water running in this place. So Horton doesn't really think it's that big of a deal, but she says, you know, please go investigate. It'll again make things more interesting. So he decides, you know what, I'm going to go investigate it. He goes to a bathroom, which is in the same room that they're in. The bathroom door is over there. He heads over to the bathroom door and the dripping noise becomes louder and louder. So he finds out this is the source of where the sound is coming from. He opens up the door and the bathtub is filled with bloody water. And there's a almost naked old man with his throat slashed open that's bleeding out there and screaming and kind of not screaming, but sort of with his eyes looking and begging for help. You know, his throat is slit open. He's bleeding out into the tub. He's just sitting there suffering. And then Horton freaks out. He closes the door. He basically screams and freaks out. He yells at his crew that, hey, there's somebody in there. We're not alone. And then his camera guy goes in there. And when they take a look, um, the bathroom is completely empty. There's no bloody water. The, the tub is completely clean. There's no sign anybody's been in there for a long, long time. And they think that Horton might be playing it up. He might be getting paranoid. The camera guy even sort of brushes him off. And then as the story progresses, some more and more poltergeist paranormal activity starts happening. Um, the doors in this top floor all start slamming violently. The windows start rattling. The furniture starts shaking. And then the doors start getting caved in. It seems like some entity is trying to break through these doors and the wooden doors are ripping apart and cracking. And then there's blood. The doors in this building start bleeding. There's blood coming down from the doors and dripping down to the ground. And eventually they get the camera up and they start recording this. Horton is like, this is the first, you know, live recorded case of paranormal and actual poltergeist activity that you guys are seeing. And when he phones back to the psychic that's outside of the house, you know, he tries getting some more information and the psychic reveals that there's two types of supernatural activity that can occur in these places of crime or, you know, places where ghosts roam. One is your typical sort of haunting where you see visions of ghosts, you see visions of things that are not actually there. Those kind of activities are what the uh, psychic calls these sort of instant replays. They're sort of um, capturing, he says they capture a point in time 
during the ghost or specter's life and then it gets captured and stored within the walls of the building so when you enter that building it then is replayed like an instant replay on a camera and you see that playing out that's what those type of hauntings are which typically like 99 percent 99.9 percent .9 of people see these sort of hauntings where a point in time is captured within the walls of a building and then replayed to them um so these are things that you may see that don't actually exist um sort of like uh money in my bank account and then you have poltergeist activity which is the idea that there's a malevolent specter or figure that's actually living in the a building or house and they're actually um, meaning to do some harm they're able to physically influence and interact with the environment and specifically target anybody who may be unwanted and enters and the horden the news reporter guy basically asked the psychic well if we're in poltergeist activity how much danger do you think we're in is this potentially dangerous and the psychic says <coughs> excuse me that this was one of the most dangerous things you could have ever done as soon as you entered within the you know front door of this house this is an extremely malevolent and haunted place and as he says that horton turns around because of some scuffle and something has happened to somebody he these guys start getting targeted by some type of entity that may or may not be tied to the origin of the house there is some brutal gore some brutal imagery some potentially murders that happen and there is a decision made by some people that ends up going quite bad and ends up making for a quite horrific news report story that broadcasts live and that's where i'm going to leave off that's sort of the plot without me giving away what the climax and ending is this is a perfect Tales from the Crypt episode. I would give this a 10 out of 10, a perfect score. The story premise is one of my favorite things in horror media. The idea of a haunted house, I really enjoy and love haunted house stories and all types of, you know, horror genres, adult, YA, you know, kids horror. Haunted house stories, for some reason, always unnerve me. They're always very creepy and scary. Um, they genuinely freak me out a little bit. And I noticed that in a horror, they always end up being some of the best written stories, in my opinion. And then you add the fact that it's a news report, a live news report. So you get that sort of found footage, TV show angle to spice up the gimmick of a haunted house that's also possessed by a prolific serial killer, an older woman who killed a lot of elderly patients and buried their bodies in the basement of the house. That's very creepy, very eerie, and the execution of the episode is fantastic. The climax is full of a lot of good stuff in there. When you actually get the poltergeist activity, like I mentioned, the old man bleeding out in the tub with his throat slashed open was creepy, really scary, and then the fact that he goes back, Horton and the camera guy, and they see nothing. It looks pristine as a bathroom that got under me i was like that's pretty cool um the poltergeist activity of all you know the door slamming the furniture shaking and then the doors actually caving in like something is smashing into the doors and breaking them and then the doors start bleeding i don't know what it is dude the doors you know caving in and then starting bleeding something about just doors bleeding is horrific that makes you feel like the haunted house is alive it makes it extra scary extra ominous and then the fact that people start getting murdered people start getting targeted you get some violent gore in the climax you get some good action sequences that these ghosts or specters may be quite malevolent and they have quite a bit of influence over this house and they mean harm they really mean harm and the decision made by certain characters was quite morbid it was sort of that over-the-top comical thing that Tales from the Crypt does at certain points of the story, but it had a nice flair to it. It didn't feel corny. It felt like, okay, this is over-the-top. It's comical, but it's disturbing. It's funny, but disturbing at the same time, and it made for this really iconic ending to the episode, um, which basically uh, says that, you know, next time on this news broadcast, you're going to get this interview and this sort of episode segment, but you know very well that that's not going to be happening because of the things that have unfolded to this news crew. It's got the 10 out of 10, a perfect score. I love this episode. I would recommend all of you guys check this out. This is hands down, in my opinion, the scariest episode in Tales from the Crypt and probably one of my favorite haunted house stories that I've ever read. So if you're a fan of that type of media, if you're a fan of Tales from the Crypt, if you've never watched 
Tales from the Crypt, you're interested in that, and you like anthology horror, all of those factors make it perfect for you to check out this episode. And a lot of people like this one. I know quite a bit of people who love this one. I'm in the boat that I absolutely love this one. So I think you'd have a good time if you're looking for those things. A truly scary, truly well done episode that's fun at the same time. That's all I have for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, I got the red on. I got the red on. Hit that subscribe button down below. We are six subscribers away from 300 subscribers. If we can hit that very soon, that'd be great. And I'll have, excuse me, a unique video plan for you guys. I'll do something special. And hit that like button down below and then comment down below your thoughts and opinions. Is this one of your favorite episodes from Tales from the Crypt? Are there other episodes that you enjoy? What are some of your favorite haunted house stories? What are your, some favorite subgenres or stuff that you guys like seeing? Comment that all down below. It helps boost the video up in the algorithm, gets the content out there for you guys so you guys can have fun stuff to watch and we can start a dialogue. And that's all I have for today. Hope you guys enjoyed and stay tuned for more content to come during this summer. I am pumping out a lot of horror stuff so you guys will not be bored. Deuces. Jeez, man. Rambling about horror is fun and I enjoy it, but I get quite dry. But luckily, my cough is slowly, slowly going away. So once that goes away, shit, your boy is going to be back in the peak. I'm going to be looking like Horton in front of that news reporting camera. Although hopefully there's no poltergeist coming after me. As long as it's on camera, I'm going to get views.